Hi, Heart Room friends. We're in the little house in the big woods, and we're on page 109, the story of Pa and the bear in the way. When I went to town yesterday with the furs, I found it hard walking in the soft snow. It took me a long time to get to town, and the other men with furs had come in earlier to do their trading. The storekeeper was busy, and I had to wait until he could look at my furs. Then we had to bargain about the price of each one, and then I had to pick out the things that I wanted to take in trade. So it was nearly sundown before I could start home. I tried to hurry, but the walking was hard and I was tired. So I had not gone far before night came, and I was alone in the big woods without my gun. There were still six miles to walk, and I came along as fast as I could. The night grew darker and darker, and I wished for my gun, because I knew that some of the bears had come out of their winter dens. I had seen their tracks when I went to town in the morning. Bears are hungry and cross this time of year. You know they have been sleeping in their dens all winter long with nothing to eat. That makes them thin and angry when they wake up. I did not want to meet one. As I hurried along as quick as I could in the dark, by and by the stars gave a little light. It was still black as pitch where the woods were thick, but in the open places I could see dimly. I could see the snowy road ahead a little way, and I could see the dark woods standing all around me. I was glad when I came into an open place where the stars gave me this faint light. All the time I was watching, as well as I could for bears, I was listening to the sounds they make when they go carelessly through the bushes. Then I came again into an open place, and there, right in the middle of my road, I saw a big he was standing up on his hind legs, looking at me. I could see his eyes shine. I could see his pig snout. I could even see one of his claws in the starlight. My scalp prickled, and my hair stood straight up. I stopped in my tracks, and I stood still. The bear did not move. There he stood, looking at me. I knew it would do no good to try to go around him. He would follow me into the dark woods, where he could see better than I could. I did not want to fight a winter-starved bear in the dark. Oh, I wished I had had my gun. I had to pass that bear to get home. I thought that if I could scare him, he might get out of the road and let me go by. So I took a deep breath, and suddenly I shouted with all of my might and ran at him, waving my arms. But he didn't move. I did not run very far towards him, I tell you. I stopped and I and looked at him, and he stared, looking at me, and then I shouted again, and there he stood. I kept on shouting and waving my arms, but he did not budge. Well, it would do me no good to run away. There were other bears in the woods. I might meet one at any time. I might as well deal with this one as any other. Besides, I was coming home to Ma and you girls. I would never get here if I ran away from everything in the woods that scared me. So at last I looked around and I got a good big club, a solid heavy branch that had been broken from a tree by the weight of the snow in the winter. I lifted it up in my hands and I ran straight at that bear. I swung my club as hard as I could and I brought it down, bang, on his head. What do you notice about this bear? Is it a bear? Isn't that silly? And there he stood, for he was nothing but a big black burned stump. I had passed it on my way to town that morning. It wasn't a bear at all. I only thought it was a bear because I had been thinking all the time about bears and being afraid that I would meet one. It wasn't a bear at all, Mary asked. No, Mary, it wasn't a bear at all. There I had been yelling and dancing and waving my arms all by myself in the big woods, trying to scare a stump. Laura said, ours was really a bear, but we were not scared because we thought it was Sookie. Pa did not say anything, but he hugged her tighter. Oh, that bear might have eaten Ma and me all up, Laura said, snuggling closer to him. But Ma walked right up to him and slapped him, and he didn't do anything at all. Why didn't he do anything? I guess he was too surprised to do anything, Laura Pa said. I guess he was afraid when the lantern shone in his eyes. And when Ma walked right up to him and slapped him, he knew she wasn't afraid. Well, you were brave too, Laura said. Even if it was only a stump, you thought it was a bear. You'd have to hit him on the head with a club if he had been a bear, wouldn't you, Pa? Yes, Pa says. I would have. I had to. Then Ma said it was bedtime. She helped Laura and Mary undress and button up their red flannel nightgowns. They knelt down by the trundle bed and said their prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. 
And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Ma kissed them both and tucked the covers in around them. They lay there a while, looking at Ma's smooth parted hair and her hands busy with sewing in the lamplight. Her needle made little clicking sounds against her thimble, and then the thread went softly swish through the pretty calico that Pa had traded furs for. Laura looked at Pa, who was greasing his boots. His mustaches and his hair and his long brown beard were silky in the lamplight, and the colors of his plaid jacket were gay. He whistled cheerfully while he worked, and then he sang. The birds were singing in the morning, and the myrtle and the ivy were in bloom. And the sun over the hills was a-dawning, t'was then that I laid her in, a, in the tomb. It was a warm night. The fire had gone to coals on the hearth, and Pa did not build it up. All around the little house in the big woods, there were little sounds of snow, snow falling, and from the eaves there was the drip-drip of the melting icicles. In just a little while, the trees would be putting out their baby leaves, all rosy and yellow and pale green, and there would be wild flowers and birds in the woods. Then there would be no more stories by the fire at night, but all day long, Laura and Mary would run and play among the trees, for it would be spring. <laughs>